We're gonna meet our friend Andy. I feel like good things can come from this. Do you realize that you helped save his life because he could have died from crying, literally, to make him not cry? He saved his life. Good morning, my superheroes. How are you today? Good. good. You guys look so good and so strong. So I want to tell you what we're doing today. We're going to meet our friend Andy. Andy is about Calvin's age. He is going to tell us his story with his family, and we're going to play with him today. Okay. Okay. Are you excited to play with Andy? Awesome. Calvin? Is he a kid? He's a kid. Yeah, he's, he's like Calvin's age. Oh. So you'll have a lot of fun with him, okay? He looks yeah, he's, he has the name from Toy Story. Last year when we did the food drive, we met a very special family, Andy's family. And we met them again at VidSummit this year, me and my dad. And they told us about Andy's story in, in more depth. And we are going to visit them today. And we are going to talk to Andy and play with Andy. And we're going to talk with their family. And we're going to tell you their story. So we are here at the Whitaker household. Hi, We've got everyone back here and especially Andy. Hey, hey bud. Hi. Can you say hi? hi. <laughs> Andy has been like reaching for the camera all day today. <laughs> he loves it. You like to vlog, don't you? Do you want to vlog for a minute? Yeah? Okay. Okay. <laughs> say hi guys. Hi. 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 <laughs> that is so sweet. Like I mentioned before, we had met Heidi Hi. and Emery Hi. and Robbie at the food drive that we did with Ellie's family. And then we met them again at Vid Summit. And every time that we've talked to them, we've talked about Andy. Andy's a very, very special kid. I'm got, getting emotional already. He just really wants to be, <laughs> Do you, want to you want to be the highlight go. right now, huh? <laughs> so we were talking about Andy's story. So we came over to the Whitaker's house and, and we want them to, to share his story. I don't need to tell you how special Ellie and Jared are because you already know this, but to our family, they mean so much. When Andy was born, he was born with a lot of health challenges, a lot of problems with breathing. He was in a lot of pain. Hi, buddy. Nothing was really helping him until one day when my daughter Emery figured out that if we turned on Ellie and Jared, he would stop crying and that he would be okay while their video was on, which seemed kind of crazy. We tried other people's videos and it didn't have the same effect. It was just something about Ellie and Jared and the crying would stop and the suffering would stop just during that time. And so Ellie and Jared got him through multiple surgeries. They got him through so many hard times and kind of our sanity because it's really hard to have a baby who screams 24 seven for months at a time. Meeting them was so incredible, but I really couldn't tell them. I could never explain to them. No, you don't understand. You changed our lives. You helped this baby so much. There, there are no words and I know you're amazing people, but you helped this baby so much. <laughs> And so I was so grateful for the chance to just talk to Jared just for a minute at Vid Summit and to say, no, Jared, you need to, you need to listen because this baby is, is really okay because of what you and Ellie did for him and you didn't even know it. When I heard that for the first time, I mean, like, my heart just sunk. My heart just dropped because I couldn't believe that something that Ellie and I would just do every single day would, would have such an impact. But there's more to it than that. As much as I like to hear that, you know, it's, it's very, I mean, it's very, very humbling. There's more to it than just that with, with Andy. I'm Tasha, I'm Andy's mom for months. Basically up until Andy was born, I would have to come over here during the day while Robbie went to work because I could not take care of myself. I was in pain, I was having um, gallbladder attacks. I had to rely on everybody to help take yeah. care of me because I was 27 weeks pregnant when I got into the car crash. And well, and even before that, you had an appendectomy. Yeah, when I found out I was pregnant with Andy, I was, <laughs> I 
we were in the ER. I was three and a half weeks and we didn't you know, know they did the normal blood tests that they do when you go into the ER and they came back in and they're like, well, everything looks normal, but you're pregnant. Congratulations. And we're like, what? what? Yeah. <laughs> they did some sort of scan and they came back and they're like, you have appendicitis. We have to do emergency surgery or you are going to lose the baby because it will burst. Mm -hmm. And so the next morning they took me back and did the surgery and I just remember thinking, I am so scared about the surgery because a couple months before that we had had a miscarriage and emotionally I was still getting past that and I was so scared of losing this baby too because of this surgery. Even from the start Andy was such a little fighter. He made it through and even from the beginning he's gone through so much but he still is fighting. Mm -hmm. he, he's such a fighter. So when Andy was born, um, his mom had been in a car accident and for nearly three months um, she needed to be on Percocet. She was in and out of the hospital. This was a day-to-day -day decision because they were trying to decide between operating on Natasha while she was seven months pregnant or trying to write it out on um, prescription drugs. And we met with um, pharma, you know, pediatric pharmacologists. I mean, there there was a, a big decision process made. Would it be safe to wait? Would it be harder on the baby? Would it be harder on Natasha? And the decision was made to have her be on Percocet and other opioids for for almost three months until Andy could be born, and then to have surgery on her. But we knew when he was born that he would be going through drug withdrawals. That's what we were expecting. What we were not expecting was him to be born with really serious um, birth defects in his airway and in his jaw. So after Andy was born, um, we found out that he had, what's called, it's a disease called laryngomalacia, which means there's too much skin right above his larynx and it would close in on him and it would cut off his airway. But also because his um, jaw was small and misshapen, it pushed his tongue back all the way back into his airway. And so when he would go to sleep, his, he would, it was almost like he was swallowing his tongue. His tongue would fill his airway completely and he would not be able to breathe. And so we actually had to hold him in a certain position to keep his airway open all night long until we could have surgery or he, until he could have the surgery. But it was really complicated because they took um, CAT scans of his jaw and then they had to send those CAT scans to a company in Colorado that built a computer generated um, version of his jaw and showing the doctors how, exactly what needed to be done to reshape it properly and, and send those back to Salt Lake City. And so he was actually hospitalized for quite a while while we were waiting for the, you know, to the ability to do surgery on mm -hmm. him. I remember the day I knew that he needed the surgery. This was before he had been admitted for the weeks before the surgery, like Heidi was saying. Um, in fact, I think the next day was when he was admitted um, or about a month beforehand. And I was sitting there holding him and we were actually watching your channel. I just got this, this horrible feeling like my baby was dead. And I was holding him, I was watching him, he was alive, he was breathing, but it felt like he was gone. And I literally heard a voice in my head say, if you do not get the surgery, that is what will happen. And I called Robbie immediately and he said he had just felt the same thing. I told my boss, I felt like I needed to go home, he was very supportive. And he had then an boss. And then two hours later, we had to call the, we had to call Primary Children's and they sent us to the ER and admitted us that night. Mm -hmm. And so. we were there for about two weeks the, before the they had the mandibles so they could do the surgery. It was honestly the strong, one of the strongest feelings I have ever had. There's no way to prepare for what it's going to be like to have a baby who's going through drug withdrawal. You know, they're in pain. It's like, even though it's like a mental thing, they're in physical pain when they don't have that drug inside of them. It's awful. And um. That's where Emery comes in <laughs> because Emery had heard about Ellie and Jared when she went to CVX Live and fallen in love with them and had gone back to the very first videos and had started watching them from the very beginning and decided she was going to lay on the floor with this newborn baby and watch Ellie and Jared and that's when she figured out that if she turned on his video, their videos, 
he would stop screaming. Just stop. And he would watch. And he would be all happy. <laughs> and as soon as the video was over, he'd start screaming again. So she'd turn on the next one. And then they became a part of our lives 24 hours a day. <laughs> because babies who are going through drug withdrawal, they don't sleep. They just scream. And so they're our family because they live with us all the time. <laughs> they don't know us, but they live with us. Whether, whether you want us to be your roommates or not, we're here. <laughs> there isn't a day that I don't think about your family. Not one day that I don't think about you. That I don't acknowledge the fact that you were a blessing in our lives and that because honestly I don't I guess one thing I didn't explain to you is what happens when he cries um, and maybe this is where you understand how you help save his life and I mean that sincerely a baby with Loringa Malaysia if they cry they can die because when they cry their airway gets so occluded and it won't come back up again so you you do everything that you can to keep them from crying which is why they get spoiled but you do everything you can to keep them from crying because it's so dangerous. And when we took him in to see doctor, the doctor, um, he said, don't let him cry. <laughs> and he's like a newborn. Yeah. Tell me not to let a drug addicted baby, don't, don't let a drug addicted baby cry. You might as well be saying, hold the tide back because that doesn't happen. And so for you to come into his life and make him not cry, do you realize that you helped save his life? Because he could have died from crying, literally. And so for your family to come on our TV screen or on the telephone or on the cell phone to me and to make him not cry, to make him not cry, they saved his life. Because the, his dad used to do that and if his dad would cry hard enough, we'd have to call the paramedics and resuscitate him. It's that big of a deal. Uh, and now his ribs are... Yeah, if you look at my, if you were to look at my rib cage, it's shaped like this instead of like a standard rib cage. Just because of how many times the compressions have been mm -hmm. done, they're just per broken. You can feel it just by like putting your hand on his chest. You can feel That's it. That's crazy. Tell me about life right now with, with Andy. It's wonderful and scary at the same time. He stops breathing about 27 times a night and um, so, and sometimes it's just really short periods. Other times he has to wake himself up to gasp for air and catch a breath. Um, he's on oxygen anytime he's asleep. He wears a cannula all the time because you don't, you know, you rip it off, it hurts. His poor face. His poor he, face. <laughs> he's had a cannula on for almost two years now and his face is just so... Red where the red tape marks and are. Raw. Yeah. Like we've tried so many different options. The thing is with Andy is that you just have to be in the right frame of mind because you don't know about tomorrow and you don't no one knows about tomorrow with their lives you know things can happen but with him we don't know about tomorrow and we've been told in confidence we had one doctor pull Robbie aside and he said he didn't he, he didn't believe that the, the right tests were being done at that moment he he didn't agree with what was happening he pulled Robbie aside he said he basically said you're up against the time clock right now and you've got to get this diagnosed before time runs out for him. And that hasn't happened yet. To have someone pull you aside to say, I think that there's something really wrong and I don't think your baby's going to live if you don't really pursue this hard and get something done. It was a hard thing to take. The thing that I asked you, you know, it's like, what's life like now? Because you said he still stops breathing 27 mm -hmm. times a night. Like, and he's not better yet. No, no, and his heart has become involved now. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's the hard thing is that not only is his brain not sending the signal for him to breathe at night, sometimes it doesn't send the signal for his heart to beat the way it should. So he's not regulating his heartbeat or his oxygen levels either. The big concern um, with the, the gene that they think might be involved is that his brain just will not tell his heart to beat one day. Right and um, he just won't wake up. So where we're at now is they, they know that his brain isn't sending the signal to his heart to beat properly at times and to breathe and to monitor his oxygen, but they don't know why. And we're kind of in this, this limbo point where we're waiting for test results to come back. More testing done. More testing to be done. But well, nobody knows anything. They've I've, never seen a yeah. child like our child anywhere near. No doctor around here knows anything. And, and they said the, that Andy's best bet at this point is for us to find another kid 
that has identical or very, even very similar symptoms to what Andy has. That's our best bet of being able to get this properly diagnosed. And that's why, like, we're here. Like, that's why, I mean, we obviously feel a personal, small personal connection to this. Every time we've talked, I think we've cried, but hearing the story from you guys and then we have an audience. We have people who have kids that may or may not be going through this and, and we want to share this story with you to see if you know of anyone who's gone through this or is going through this um, to give this boy a chance, to give your kid a chance because the more kids who have this can be tested for this, the more doctors will know about this, the more chances that Andy and other kids like him will have to survive. And what was it that you said with the, the SIDS, that 4,000 kids? The, the airway yeah. condition I had, it was in the trachea, it was, I had, both, I had both in the larynx and the trachea. Yeah. Um, they, in the year I was born, they had about 1,200 kids diagnosed. Mm -hmm. About half of them were diagnosed post-mortem, just to, to rule out SIDS. And then out of the, the ha other half of us that were diagnosed while we were alive, there were only a couple of us that survived. We were, and we were all under the care of the same doctor. Literally, a couple of you. Just, just literally, there was me and a little girl from Idaho that they life lighted to primary children's in Salt Lake City. Yeah. And the it was it was divine intervention, and we we've gotten better at diagnosing it in, in the medical world, but it's still not a very high chance, and it's it's more of a of guesswork of. If you see these things, you bring them to the hospital and we see if we stabilize the, mm -hmm. the kid. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So we wanted to bring their story to your attention. And we wanted to see if there's anything that we can do. So what to do next, if you know anything, if you have anything that you would like to share, or if you want to even know more about the Whitaker story, Andy's story, I'm gonna have their channel linked in the description down below and in the card. This is a difficult time and this has been a daily thing for you for two years now. And you know, you've definitely had your ups and downs, but I mean, we have an audience and we want to help. And I think that's one of the best ways that we can help is to get information out to the world. And so that, I mean, that's why we're here. That's what we wanna do for you guys. I've been touched by your story and by Andy and I want to make sure that we do what we can to help. Like I said, all of their information will be in the description down below. Meeting with the Whitakers and talking made me just so grateful for all of the blessings that we have every single day. And not only that, it made me recognize and see how grateful they were for every single day too, especially every single day that they have with Andy. He is such a sweet little boy. He is so happy. Yes, he loved grabbing the camera <laughs> and vlogging. It, it was fun to be with them. It was emotional. We met them a year ago, but today we we're actually able to sit down and talk with them more. And this is something that they definitely want. They want their story out there. They want to be able to um, get answers. They are really hoping that with our reach that somebody will have what is going on or know any more information that can help them. And so this was an emotional day and this is kind of an emotional vlog, but I feel like good things can come from this. And our friends, they definitely have approved the video, mm -hmm. the thumbnail, the title. They they want this out there. They want their story to be heard. And like she said, today it is rough as it is and hard like it it needs to be blunt and it needs yeah. to be said and um i am grateful that they that, that we found each other i yeah. love feeling their warm spirit welcoming us and i feel very humble that they have felt that way about us and it makes me grateful yeah i mean i just think about if there is something out there like what that could potentially mean like if Andy's condition gets taken care of, could that be a segue to helping or curing SIDS? I mean, think of and all of the people that this could help. That's definitely what his grandma believes. She's yeah. like, I really feel like 
that there's a lot of things that are not being answered right now that doctors could look into. And like they said, mm -hmm. the time is ticking and they're really hoping that that this can be a blessing for a lot of people. Yeah. So that's, I mean, it's that's very why personal and it's very yeah. scary to share stuff, um, especially like this. Um, but there's a lot of unknown answers. And like I said, they really would love. So if anyone has any information, you know where the email is and we'll, we'll have leave their, their channel and their the videos. They have more videos talking about this mm -hmm. as well. It's hard to make yeah. so much into one little video. So definitely watch theirs. And we love you guys and we can't wait to hang out again. And we will see you guys tomorrow. Thank you for watching. We'll see you later, Andy. Have Bye, a wonderful Andy. day. <laughs> Bye. Bye.